Today, you know, we're talking about a story about Anne Frank. Who's heard of Anne Frank? Has everyone heard of Anne Frank? It's okay if you haven't heard of Anne Frank. Anne Frank's family had to hide during the Holocaust. And while, and this, she was a real person, and she wrote a diary during the time that she was hiding. And we all know this diary now because the diary survived. Anne also had a cat in real life, Mushi. And so Steve and David had the brilliant idea to write the story from the point of view of Mushi the cat which we think is really great, so it kind of invites kids in. And our wonderful professional actors, Casey Adler and Lauren Shuffle, will be reading the book. Okay, and then afterwards, we have the books for sale. Up here, downstairs, the guys will sign the books for you. You can ask them questions. So we hope you'll have a good time, and more than anything, we hope you come back to the Holocaust Museum, because we're happy to see you here today. Uh, I'm Steve Rubin, this is David Miller. Hello, hello. First of all, we want to thank Holocaust Museum LA for inviting us to be part of this today. This is great. This is a great venue. And uh, we're thrilled to present our book to you. And we have two wonderful actors here today who are going to perform it. And um, we thought we'd tell you a little bit about the process of how this book came together. Um, Dave and I kind of laugh about this because it starts with shaving. I have an unusual hobby. While I'm shaving, I listen to full-length feature films on audio. I'm also a screenwriter, as is David. And, uh, and you're by a film historian. And a film historian. And um, you learn good dialogue by listening to classics. So one day, I was listening to The Diary of Anne Frank, the 1959 film that George Stevens directed with uh, Millie Perkins, Diane Baker, and uh, Shelley Winters, and there's a scene early in, which we'll, we'll show you shortly as an ex exact, exact uh, reference, where the kids are chasing Mushi around the attic. And it, at that moment, it was like a thunderstruck thing. I said, oh my God, what did the cat think of these strange people who never go outside, they have to tiptoe most of the day or not move at all, and they all seem freaked, and I called David. David and I have known each other for many years. David used to run the Criterion Collection of uh, laser discs, and he's also a screenwriter and a filmmaker, an award-winning filmmaker. And David has read 2,000 children's books. He he's like knows the market very well. I said, David, what do you think about a book called The Cat Who Lived with Anne Frank? I, I love the idea, and you know, I've never grown up, so that's why I love children's books so much. <laughs> By the way, you. St you you start to do research, and we reread the diary several times, and Anne actually writes frequently about the cat. This was a real cat. This isn't us making up a story that happened to have a cat. Um, although we have come up with a sequel, which we haven't sold yet. It's called Mushi in the Holy Land. Mushi eventually is helped by a British soldier who takes uh, him to Palestine on a ship called the Exodus. So we think that could be an interesting follow-up. We haven't quite pitched it yet, but that'll be down the road. But what's interesting about this whole angle is there's a lot of historical research, which we'll tell you a little bit as we're, as we're reading, the, as the actors are reading the book. But we, one of the more interesting things is when, when the Franks and the Van Pelses and uh, the uh, uh, dentist Pfeffer were captured by the Nazis, uh, Meep, the lady, Meep Geese, who was one of the helpers, um, went to Gestapo headquarters in Amsterdam and tried to have them released, and obviously that didn't work. But when she came back to the attic, it was ransacked, everything was on the floor, guess who's sitting on the diary? Mushi. Wow. And that becomes a very much a part and, of our story. And she gathered up the pages of the diary and put them in a drawer yeah. for Otto. Yeah. Well, Meep did, not Mushi. M Mushi. <laughs> <laughs> Mushi was a little bit traumatized, too. So we are going to uh, read the book. Hi there. Hello. Thanks for coming. What's your name? <laughs> huh? Noe. Noe? What, what are all the kids' names? Minette. Annie. Annie? <laughs> Minette? Minette? What's Come yours? Back there? Lucas. 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 All right. Here we go. The Cat Who Lived with Anne Frank by David Lee Miller 
and Stephen J. Rubin. My boy Peter gathers me inside his coat, the heavy one with the yellow star. He wears layers and layers of clothing, even though it's a hot summer day. I know to stay still, quiet, because Jews are forbidden to own pets. I burrow, I breathe between the buttons. I smell the sea, the herring, the tulips. I hear my boy's shoes clacking cobblestones. I hear angry soldiers and trucks and barking dogs. The ones with black spiders on their blood red armbands. Collars, flags and banners. Peter's heart quickens. Mine does too, until our hearts beat as one. Church bells chime over crying gulls and the watery putt-putt of canal barges. Suddenly, we're inside. Peter opens his coat, and a warm-hearted woman scratches my ears. I gulp delicious air tingling with spice from the factory below. Meep leads us up steep stairs to a bookcase. A bookcase that opens like magic to a hidden door and hidden rooms. A girl is there, a sparkling, brown-eyed, dark-haired girl. A chatty, yellow star girl Peter knows from school, from before the Nazis and their cruel rules, when we were free and unafraid. When I rode, kitten face to the wind, perched high in my boy's speeding bike basket to the oasis where Peter snuck me inside his coat and I licked right from his cone and the girl giggled and she smelled the <laughs> vanilla too. Yes, I know this girl. Her name is Anne Frank. Anne Frank. The girl smiles a brilliant smile. She strokes my fur and says, Welcome, Mushi, to our secret annex. Our hiding place from the black spiders is cramped and crowded for eight people and one cat. Peter and I sleep under the attic stairs. Anne shares a narrow bedroom with her sister, Margot. She pastes up pictures of movie stars, princes, queens, so it might feel like home. During the day, when the workers and machines thrum in the spice factory below. We, the hidden, stay still and silent. Because if just one of us steps on a creaky board, sneezes, or knocks a book from a shelf, someone might hear and know yellow stars are hiding and the black spider soldiers will come. Anne passes the difficult days reading and studying. She writes in her red checkered diary. I curl with Anne as she scribbles and draws and dreams. I want my diary to be my friend. And I'm going to call this friend Kitty. <laughs> She's talking about me. Dear Kitty, writing in a diary is a really strange experience. It seems to me later on, neither I nor anyone else will be interested in the musings of a 13-year-old schoolgirl. At night, after the spice factory workers are gone, we tiptoe in shadows down through the magic bookcase into the darkened office. The hiders glue to the radio, praying for good news about the war, praying for the soldiers and dogs of the Black Spider to leave Holland. <coughs> and Anne writes, Dear Kitty, why, oh why, can't people live together peacefully? Why are millions spent on the war each day? Well, not a penny is available for medical science, artists, or the poor. 
we peek from the dark office through thick curtains into the wet night. We see frightened yellow stars herded toward the train station. And Anne writes, Dear Kitty, I feel wicked sleeping in a warm bed while somewhere out there my dearest friends are dropping from exhaustion or being knocked to the ground. My job is to give love. I comfort Anne and Peter when the scary sounds of sirens and falling bombs come too close. They comfort me too when the loud booms rattle the windows. I hunt the attic rats who steal our precious potatoes and beans. Their itchy insects invade my fur. Peter picks them out and Anne writes, Dear Kitty, Moochie has now proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that having a cat has disadvantages as well as advantages. The whole house is crawling with fleas. <laughs> <laughs> I am the only hider who can venture out. I slip through the attic window toward the only glimpse of sky the humans don't veil with black paper onto the rain gutter across a chestnut tree. Anne smiles, wistful, and she writes, Dear Kitty, I long to ride a bike, dance, whistle, look at the world. I feel young and know that I am free. And yet, I can't let it show. When will we be allowed to breathe fresh air again? But the streets are far too dangerous for yellow stars. Armed black spider soldiers and dogs patrol, snarl, bark. Roadblocks and checkpoints guard our old Jewish quarter, Dam Square, every pathway in and out of the city. I crawl and dash along rooftops. I'm a shadow in the shadows, a climber, a leaper, an explorer. I find hundreds of yellow stars hiding in storage rooms above the tiger cages at the artist zoo. Zookeepers sneaking them wild animal food while SS officers picnic and party. A warrior, I slash and distract black spider dogs as brave resistance fighters led by a red-haired girl rescue captive yellow star babies and children from a hot, smelly prison, once an elegant Jewish theater. But I always return to my boy Peter and the girl he now loves. The girl hiding in the secret annex who dreams of being a famous writer someday and teaching people's, and touching people's hearts. The girl whose spirit is never broken even as months turn into years and Amsterdam is starving. Dear Kitty, I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are truly good at heart. I cuddle with Peter and Anne on the attic floor. <laughs> I purr as I feel the warmth of Anne's heart like a fire on a crisp night. I wonder, will anybody ever hear my girl's words? Read them. Wind wisps the chestnut tree towering outside our tiny precious window. Anne whispers, If we think of the beauty still around us, we won't give in to sadness. And to the chestnut's lilt, and the beats and purrs of my boy's and girl's breath, I nap. We nap. Dreaming dreams more powerful than bombs. Dreams of Anne's kind and gentle spirit lighting up the world forever. Yeah. And we'll read to you 
a little bit here on the last pages about Anne Frank. Anne was born in Germany. When Adolf Hitler and his Nazis came to power, they banned Jews from going to work or school, destroyed their property, and sometimes even beat and killed them. So Anne and her family moved to Amsterdam. When Anne was 10, Hitler took over Amsterdam too and banned Jews from movie theaters and parks and from using cars and bicycles. Jews couldn't even have pets. And all Jews had to wear a yellow star with the word Jude or Jew written in black letters. When the Germans threatened Anne's sister Margot, the family slipped into hiding in the secret annex. Brave friends risked their lives to help the Franks survive. Other friends joined them. A total of eight people hid together, including young Peter, who brought his cat, Mushi. For Anne's 13th birthday, she was given a checkered red and green diary with a tiny metal lock. She named it Kitty, and in it she wrote about her hopes and dreams. The people hiding in the secret annex were afraid the Nazis would find them. During the day, with workers in the factory below, Anne and the others had to be extremely quiet. Anne longed to be free. After more than two years of hiding, Nazis found the hidden group and sent them all to concentration camps, where many Jews were forced into labor or killed. Meep, an office worker who had helped hide them, saved Anne's diary. She also rescued Mushi. <laughs> Only Anne's father, Otto, survived. When Meep gave him Anne's diary, Otto read it and cried. Out of the darkness of Otto's grief, the bright light of Anne's words shone through. Anne's story, spirit, and words live on to inspire millions. Anne dreamed about becoming famous, and now she's one of the most famous authors of all time. Today, the house where Anne and Mushi hid is a museum. You can go see it for yourself. Some people find it hard to understand the enormous tragedy of the Holocaust. They can't believe the Nazis killed people just because of their religion, their race, their orientation, or circumstance. But when people read Anne's diary, it becomes real because they get to know one of the victims personally. They get to know Anne Frank. <clears throat> Oh, sure. <laughs> we can do a little more reading. Throwing it to you, Mushi. A note on the characters and places in this story. Mushi's name for the invading Nazis, the Black Spiders, was inspired by the film The Sound of Music, in which young Marta von Trapp worries, maybe the flag with the black spider on it makes people nervous. I don't remember how it goes. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. A cat calling Jews yellow stars seemed a fine feline fit. The red-haired girl was a brave Dutch resistance fighter named <laughs> Jante Je Johanna Shaft. Don't worry about it. Codenamed Honey. The Nazis feared her greatly. Amsterdam's Jewish theater was elegant and joyful until the Nazis turned it into a horrific prison and overcrowded deportation center, seizing children from their parents and forcing them into a converted nursery across the street. Honey and the resistance heroically smuggled over 600 of those kids to freedom. Nazis used Amsterdam's artist zoo for their own entertainment, unaware that brave zoo workers were hiding over 300 Jews in the storage rooms above the cages. There, the Jews sweltered in the summer and froze in the winter, but nearly all of them survived the, winter, the war. And yes, a cat really did live in hiding with Anne Frank. Anne wrote about the cat frequently in her diary. The cat's name was Mushi. You guys did a great job. Great Thank job. You. Yeah, <laughs> really great. Does anybody have any questions about the book or the subject? Well, how did that come about? Oh, the back of the um, offices was kind of a separate live-in apartment that Otto Frank 
you know, like a lot of those old uh, merchants' houses on the canals, they had various rooms, and yeah, yeah. There's a whole mystery as to whether, who, who betrayed the Franks and the Van Pels and Fritz Pfeffer, but nobody has really declared exactly who the person was there. There was a lot of interaction between people getting um, forged ration cards, and somehow it may have affected their their ability to stay safe. Um, interesting, the German officer who arrived and arrested the Franks, Karl Silberbauer, later became the police chief, I think, of Munich. Uh, and he did not, uh, there were no war crimes uh, for turning them in. Sad. Yes. That's a real good question. I think um, I probably first heard the story when I saw that original movie, the one that George Stevens directed in 1959. I think I may have caught it later on television, but that was my first book. We didn't, uh, um, as um, Jen said, we, we didn't um, study the Holocaust back in the 60s. It was kind of not a topic people brought up, but the Diary of Anne Frank, the book, was starting to be read. David, did you read it? I read it as before high school. Okay. I, yeah, I believe. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty ubiquitous. It's amazing if you, I have a Google News alert for Anne Frank, and every day I get dozens of stories from around the world. She, she's so unbelievably relevant. And then if something happens, like recently they thought they found who betrayed her, and it turned out to be hmm. not true, that would be, there would be dozens and dozens, even more per day, you know. And if something like Justin Bieber visited the annex, you know, then which it would be did. per hour, which, which he did, <laughs> <laughs> and took a lot of flack for because oh, he said he 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 um he thought that Anne would be a believer, <laughs> and uh, which she would have been. Yeah, I mean, she loved pop stars and she That's loved true. movie stars and and royalty. Um, uh, she she hung those pictures up. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, he, I, I, in his defense, he spent three and a half hours there and wrote some very heartfelt things in in the book there, and he could have been doing something else, you know, and 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 yet he came and really cared. But um, uh, that's interesting. You know, it's interesting. We had to clear all the quotes um, with the foundation, if if you remember, and this kind of speaks to Anne's power today. And we had a quote at the end of the book that Anne is attributed with saying, but she never said. When we deeply researched it and the foundation likewise researched it, they discovered it wasn't true, uh, that she wrote it. And I, my theory is that it was about her. And it was, um, in the end, um, the sharpest weapon of all is a kind and gentle spirit. Uh, and it's just so true. She, she so much embodies that. Uh, because in the long run, she's been just an incredible weapon against the hate. Mm -hmm. um, because I told you earlier that um, it was my, the whole book was inspired by me listening to that little scene in the original movie, we're going to show you a couple scenes from the movie real quickly. We should tell you about our movie project. Uh, we have written an animated feature which takes the story to another level. Um, it's an animal world story where Mushi leaves the attic every day and joins the Dutch animal resistance against the Nazis. In our story, the German shepherds, Rottweilers, and Dobermans who patrol the canal streets are the villains. And it's a story, it's an action-adventure story that we've been developing for quite a few years and uh, we're hoping to get it made soon. Uh, it's just a natural, exciting adventure. We, ki we kind of call it The Lion King meets a child version of Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> Inglorious Bastards for kids. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mushi has two friends in the story. One is Kipper the Cormorant, and if you don't know Cormorants, Cormorants are birds that can go underwater, a submarine bird, and a little French field mouse named Bartel. 
And the bad, the bad, 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 bad guy, of course, every animated feature has to have a really good bad guy, is Blitzkrieg the Rottweiler. So we're, uh, we're very hopeful to get this thing moving. We actually have an Academy Award winning director involved now. And uh, it's, it's historical fiction, so there's a lot of, you learn a lot of history anyway. Um, you know, obviously the book is all historically accurate. Uh, this one takes some liberties, but uh, also educates you. And Hani, of course, is uh, inspired by the red-haired girl. Yeah, we have a, a character of, uh, in the story. It's a, a female cat named Hani. And she has a secret. I won't give you the spoiler now. <laughs> <laughs> so we are selling the books today. Uh, they're $20. We have, we'll take cash. Uh, you can, if you have a Venmo account, or you can buy the book at the front desk, however uh, works for you. And uh, please tell your friends about the book itself. And, Thank you.